Australia stepping up foreign cooperation on state-level cyber deterrence. The Australian government is increasingly concerned about the blurring of state and non-state activity, in particular that certain states have used third-party criminal groups to mask their cyber-based activity, a joint parliamentary committee has heard. Cyber War, a guide to the frightening future of online conflict. Every device had become a battleground. Here's everything you need to know. Read more. Addressing an inquiry into Australia's trade system and the digital economy on Friday, Australia's first ambassador for cybercrime Tobias Fekin said that while it is tough to create responses to such activity, it is something the government is thinking of quite actively alongside its neighbouring countries. We're thinking about if it is possible or plausible to get to a point of thinking about cyber deterrence. Are there ways that groups of states can push back on some of this behavior in a way that means that states will think twice, because currently states don't tend to think twice, it's, what can we get away with? Fekin told the committee. Some states now use criminal activity to put money in their own coffers, and you'll see that through the attribution of WannaCry to North Korea. The committee heard that as the bar is now being lowered for cybercrime entry, Individuals don't need to be a whiz kid with an abundance of toolkits for hire and malware to download. Fekin said it has become a more complex proposition than just limiting access to the Internet and therefore the digital economy. The benefits from it, I think, still outweigh the dangers we now see emerge from the criminal space, he added. Pointing to an agreement signed with China last year on preventing the cyber-enabled theft of one another's intellectual property. Fekin said steps are already in place to create a cyber resilience capability that benefits the greater Asia-Pacific region as a whole. We believe that through building the additional cyber security capability of our partners, then it's a common good. It creates a better market for our companies to invest in, he said. Not naming names, but I think some of the countries our companies are brave enough to go invest in in the digital economy. I can only imagine what their risk profile must be like. So if there are things FAD can do to assist, we will. As the committee is concerned with the security of Australia's trade system in the digital economy, Fekin explained that his role as cyber ambassador is to maximize economic opportunities for growth and prosperity through digital trade. He noted that the way in which he and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade fought, Hope to achieve that is through firstly shaping an enabling environment for digital trade, including through trade agreements, and secondly the implementation of trade facilitation measures. We are as a nation actively involved in trying to shape that global picture and the rule making that goes on in the digital trade space, and trying to reduce barriers to digital trade, he added. We can't stand still, especially when dealing with the online environment, it shifts so quickly. We want to achieve the best economic benefit for Australia, but unless we are looking at cyber security and uplifting cyber security in the international community, and also looking at how we address cyber criminal activity, then, to be frank, it will begin to unravel all that we have. On Australia's side, according to Fekin, is that the country has a great, trusted brand of diplomacy. If you're bringing that brand to cyber security and securing the networks that underpin the growth in the region, then that's a great opportunity we need to exploit, he added. When you think about the ability to interfere with commercial networks, one of the biggest issues we face is that it's all based on the same infrastructure, regardless of if it's government or private sector, there's a common threat picture we're all trying to deal with. Dr. Tobias Fekin appointed as Australia's Ambassador for Cyber Affairs. The federal government has announced the appointment of Dr. Tobias Fekin as Australia's inaugural Ambassador for Cyber Affairs. Supporting digital trade a key element of Australia's cyber diplomacy, Fekin. Global in perspective, regional in focus is the mantra underpinning Australia's forthcoming international cyber engagement strategy, but with trade come norms of behaviour and enforcement. Cyber war looms as diplomats dither. Simulations at a news national security college suggest that the world is sleepwalking towards war. Meanwhile, international cyber negotiations could be set back a decade. Australian Electoral Commission battens down the cyber hatches. 
In response to the alleged interference and the lead-up to the 2016 U.S. presidential election, the Australian Electoral Commission is working with Malcolm Turnbull's cyber advisors to make sure it is prepared. How Artificial Intelligence is Unleashing a New Type of Cybercrime, Tech Republic Rather than hiding behind a mask to rob a bank, criminals are now hiding behind artificial intelligence to do their attack. However, financial institutions can use AI as well to combat these crimes.